You can also solely trade from this curve mode. So you don't necessarily have to start in table mode. This is where we just were. And then we went to curve. So you can actually start here in curve instead and just go, oh yeah, I want to place a long call vertical spread on TSM for the expiration that I had selected. I can click on go. And now in this curve mode as well, we have our trade set up here. So it's based on personal preference. If you like to go through the trade tab or the curve trading mode in the curve trading mode, for the most part, you can set up legs by uh, messing around with the call and put data here and setting up a trade through this. I think some, it might be a, a little out of scope for, for some here, but uh, this is also a different way that you can look to set up trades either by uh, clicking on the bitter ass there of different options, but uh, it can get a little muddled there. But for the most part in the curve mode, you're using the strategy selector to, you know, maybe we want to do a short strangle, we set up a short strangle there, select our legs here, profit or loss zones, and everything is good. And then, you know, when we go back to the trade table, we can do things a little differently. But uh, for right now, let's go back to the trade table. And I want to show you guys setting up some ratio spreads and calendar spreads, because those are kind of the two big, um, big kind of hard stuff. And then us, ah, Jay, good question, my friend. Thank you. I'll go back real quick. So Jay was asking the uh, break even points on this trade. So the easiest way to see your break even point on this trade is essentially going to the PL at expiration here. So setting up our chart like we just did. And then, you know, as you're zooming in and out with your mouse wheel, or there's um, some zoom in tools here and scaling stuff here. If you need to mess around with it, but you know, as you're scrolling your mouse back and forth here, you see as we cross that x-axis from negative to positive, that's where we're seeing our break-even. So for this trade in particular, our break-even is right around uh, 121.64. Um, so that's a, a visual quick way to see your break-even point. So good question there. Great. We're going to keep cruising through here. I'm seeing a lot of your guys' questions come in. Don't worry. We're, we're going to kind of loop back into it on the uh, Q&A here in a second. But uh, let's just show uh, ratio spreads and calendars really quick, and then we'll come back to the analysis mode here. So we'll clear off our trade and go back to our table mode. So we're back in our table mode. We're back in our, um, we're actually in Feb 16th. Let's go to our March expiration. But uh, for setting up a ratio spread, Again, I'm going to I'm just going to lean you guys towards the strategy selector tool here because it's going to save you some time and I'll show you why. So, if you're going off of the strategy selector tool here and you go to the top, you go, you know, oh yeah, I want to do a long call ratio spread here. Toggle those. Um, let me just see if I can line that up properly. Hey, nice. Uh, so we got long call ratio spread. We can click go. And now that's going to help set up our trade so that it is automatically a two to one. So if we see here on the left, we see B2, S1. That means we're selling one, buying two. Also at the bottom of our order tick, we see ticket. We see we're selling one on um, the 120 strike, and then we're buying two on the 125 strike. Now that's just to get a one to two. If you wanted to adjust the quantity for this, you would go down here and you can also double click and type in a new number at the bottom, or, you know, you up the quantity, you want to do two to four, three to six. Great. And that's just a one to two ratio, but say you wanted to do, you know, one to three, one to four, one to five, one to six, go all the way up to one to eight. What you're going to need to do here, and this is very important. And even then, if you're like setting up butterflies or stuff like that, when you are setting up your trade here, you can actually left click and select individual legs. So I left click our long leg here on the trade table. Also, if I were to uh, double click down here at the bottom of our screen, that's gonna select that leg as well. So double click to select it. And then I can start messing around with the quantity here. And you see, I'm going one to three, one to four, one to five, one to six, one to seven, one to eight. Whoa. Good stuff. So, and that's where, again, you know, if you're not using the strategy selector tool and you're just saying, oh yeah, sell the 120, click on the bid price here, 
buy the 125 by clicking on the ask price here. This is just setting up trades through clicking on bid and ask, but you see it's a one-to-one -one, and then we would need to go left click, select, mess around with the quantity. Um, you know, if you're doing two to ones, strategy selector is just going to save you a lot of time. So, um, and Anthony, I see. <laughs> yes. Uh, good, good, good statement there, my friend. But, um, so that's uh, just quick on setting up a uh, ratio of spreads there. And then also let's cover uh, calendar spreads. It must sound like a broken record at this point, but uh, when you're setting up a calendar spread, there's, there's two ways to do it. And honestly, I think the, the latter is going to be a little bit easier for most of you, but uh, we do have calendar spreads in our strategy selector. So we go long call calendar and that's going to set up our trade here and, you know, at first, you're just going to see the front month in our sell leg there. You're not seeing our buy leg that's on the March 15th expiration. And that partially just comes with, we're viewing a lot of strike prices right now. If we wanted to make this a lot easier to see when setting up our calendar, we could go up to strikes all at the top here. So strikes all, and then go to like, maybe like 10 or eight. Uh, yeah, let's do 10. And then we get rid of that. And now we see, okay we're able to start seeing the other expirations. And if we open up this menu here now, we can have two different expirations open at the same exact time and you know mess around and, and play around with this trade. Maybe we want to change it to the 125 and maybe we need to up that to like 12 strikes or something like that. We could uh, bump it up to the 125 there. I oh, will see these ones are market or strike prices are in dollar increments anyways, but um, that's where you can set up these different uh, calendar spreads here a little bit easier. And now the latter, this is the other approach. So I'm just gonna clear that out. But the other approach here is again, you know, make sure that your strikes are, you know, 12, 10, 16. It's gonna make it a little bit easier to set it up here, but we would find our two expirations that we wanna trade. So maybe we want to, um, you know, sell in the March 15th, buy in the April 19th here. We could then open up both these options expirations. And if we're on the call side and we wanna sell, we're clicking on the bid price. So 120 strike selling the call there, we gotta click on this one right here. So we're clicking on three to sell the 120 strike. And now we have a sell leg there. And then we could go down here to the 120 strike on our call side for this April 19th expiration and click on the ask price to buy. So that is a um, that is kind of just the simple way of setting up calendars or the easier way of doing it. Uh, if you have strikes selected to all, I'm almost certain you're probably going to have a headache from the uh, the scrolling there. So very important little drop down there that helps you set up calendars. Awesome. And then uh, I, you know, again, the equities market is closed right now. Otherwise I would just ship it off and, and show you guys. And this is all live trading account right here. Um, I think we, we should be able to ship off some futures orders here a little bit later if we want, but uh, let's go ahead and, you know, just for example, versus if we wanted to ship this order off, we got it ready. We can see our price here at the bottom. So we can actually see the market that this is trading at. Market's closed right now. So the bid and ask is a little bit wider, but um, based on the collective spread between these prices here, we're seeing that you know to open this trade, the market's trading around between $1.60 debit to open versus uh, about $2.20 to open. Uh, the mid price is at 190. That's what our default price is going to be on there. And I see some of the questions too for calendars uh, in terms of probability of profit, max profit and loss. So it's a function of uh, if you're not seeing those metrics there and it, you're not going to, it, it's a function of that uh, calculating the max profit and max loss for a calendar spread is inherently you can make estimates, but you can't get a concrete number because there's been two different expirations. So from a backend perspective, platforms like it just can't do it. Um, and that's where it's like, eventually, I think we might look at um, trying to build out those closer estimates, but uh, that's why you might not see it on calendars. So good question there. 
um, from Sam. Sorry, didn't catch it earlier if you asked. But uh, back to our question, or at least what we were talking about here in terms of the market for our trade here. You know, if the market was open, I bet this spread would be a lot tighter. But, you know, as we get closer to the NAT price, we're more likely to get a fill. In this case, I'll just send it off at the mid price, go review and send. And we can see it's going to start working the next market session and send off our order. And what's nice is that, you know, we're taken back to our trade table after we do that. We see our working order here in the top. But uh, here we have our working orders listed on the trade table itself. And then what's really nice is the top right here. If you expand this window or this right side panel and then go to activity. Boom. This is also going to show us all of our previous orders on our active symbol. So in this case, we just had that working order on TSM on our right side here. So maybe you're going to hop in, place another trade or check out a chart or something. This right side panel is super, super nice for you know checking out your working orders. Maybe you're doing something else. You're looking through research and you're like, oh yeah, where was that working order at? Has it gotten filled yet? Maybe I need to you know step it up a couple cents to get filled or get a little closer to the NAP price. What's really nice is that, you know, on this right side here or in our positions tab as well, you can do the same, but really quickly, you can right click on your working order here. We have a quick action menu and we can go, hey, I don't want to place this anymore. I want to cancel it. Or maybe in our example, we were talking about changing the price. We could right click to get this quick action menu and then left click on replace order. And now we have an order to replace at a different price. Maybe we want to get it up to 195 review and send and send it off. And now we're out of that past order and working at our new order, or at least at our new price. So that's how you can quickly adjust and edit your working orders. And then, you know, just to show you too on the positions tab. So go into positions right here. We have our working order also showing in our positions tab that we could go in and click on replace, right click, and then go to replace and same exact dealio. Uh, in terms of, of setting that up there. So that was opening some trades. Let's go ahead and hop into the analysis mode, and then we'll get into cap rec and, and some of the risk analysis stuff, and we'll open up to Q&A. So going back to our analysis mode here, and I'm going to do this on an existing open position. So imagine you've already opened some trades, and they've been going for a few days or for a while. You've rolled it a bunch of times. How can you keep track and analyze that position and or, you know, maybe play around with some tools to see how different changes in implied volatility or price or other events might impact your position in portfolio? So to start, 